sun is really fierce. Oh, look at the mountains today, Jim, when they're all sunlit. Isn't that beautiful? It really is. My golly, that's just super. You know, unreal. Dave, I'm reminded of a favorite biblical passage from Psalms. I look under the hills from whence cometh my help. But of course, we get quite a bit from Houston, too. After a stop to pick up the core samples, they returned to the LEM to close out their final traverse. But first, Scott would make history, canceling a stamp on an interplanetary envelope. I'm very proud to have the opportunity here to play postman. What could be a better place to cancel a stamp than right here at Hadley Rill? Then a demonstration of a classic experiment. Well, in my left hand, I have a, a feather. In my right hand, a hammer. And I guess one of the reasons uh, we got here today was because of a gentleman named Galileo a long time ago who made a rather significant discovery about falling objects in gravity fields. And we thought that uh, where would be a better place to confirm his uh, findings than on the moon. And uh, so we thought we'd try it here for you. Uh, the feather happens to be appropriately a falcon feather for our falcon. And I'll uh, drop the two of them here, and hopefully they'll hit the ground at the same time. How about that? How about that? that Mr. Galileo was correct in his findings. Finally, Scott drove the rover away from the LEM so that its TV camera could pick up a picture of the coming liftoff. As the spaceport Risling would say, we're ready for you to come back again to the homes of men on the cool green hills of Earth. Thank you, Joe. We're ready to. But it's been great. 171 hours and 37 minutes after they had lifted off the planet Earth, Scott and Irwin would lift off its sister planet, accompanied by a musical salute they themselves would provide from a small tape recorder on board. This lift off, automatic. Hey, good smooth ride, Ed. Almost sounds like the wind wrestling, doesn't it? Well, what a view of the rail, huh? Older track coming down into it. The rendezvous and docking procedures were flawless, right on the money. But their jobs were not over yet. They would spend two more days in lunar orbit gathering data from the experiments and photography. One more day around the moon than any preceding mission. On August 4th, they prepared to come home. But even on their last orbit of the moon, they had another experiment. They placed in orbit a sub-satellite, the first ever launched by a manned spacecraft. It was designed to circle the moon for a year, measuring variations in lunar gravity, the strength and direction of interplanetary and Earth magnetic fields, and the flow of charged particles in space. Packing stations have acquired the satellite. Oh, very good. Then the burn to bring them back to Earth. But their jobs were far from over. 172,000 miles from Earth, Al Warden left the spacecraft to retrieve the 8,000 feet of film contained in the cassettes of the Experiment Bay cameras. Later, they would turn their X-ray spectrometer toward the newly discovered X-ray pulsars, those mysterious black holes in space. At the same time, in accord with the previous plan, an Earth-based Soviet observatory scanned the same areas visually to help derive a model consistent with both sets of observations. During the trip home, the X-ray spectrometer would observe seven X-ray sources and gather 50 hours of galactic data. 
Then, on August 7th, they looked into the fireball created by the heat of their re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere at 25,000 miles per hour. And there would be a heart-stopping moment as one of the three parachutes collapsed. However, the landing system was designed to use two parachutes. The third parachute was an added safety factor. Today, that margin paid off. The success of Apollo 15 had been spectacular. The scientific results had been almost unbelievable. In the words of one scientist, a five-for-one mission. Yet while we rejoice in our success, we cannot afford to forget the sometimes painful efforts that gave us these achievements. Spacecraft Commander Dave Scott. I think many people have contributed to this pinnacle we've reached. Some have contributed more than others. And we know of 14 individuals who contributed all they had. And because of that, why we left a, a small memorial on the moon, about 20 feet north of Rover 1, in a small, subtle crater, there's a simple plaque with 14 names. And those are the names in alphabetical order of all the astronauts and cosmonauts who have died in the pursuit of exploration of space. Near it is a small figure representing a fallen astronaut. We went to the moon as trained observers in order to gather data, uh, not only with our instruments on board, but with our minds. And I'd like to quote a statement from Plutarch, which I think expresses our feelings uh, since we've come back. The mind is not a vessel to be filled, but a fire to be lighted. Thank you. Thank you.